Yeah, well, right now, East IES said that it looks like to be a tropical storm, and the most favorable path now potentially is going to be inland, not along the coast. So it's pretty unlikely this is going to stay into open waters when we look at the steering currents on all the models. Right now, we're looking at the storm. Here's the center starting to get a little bit more convection around it. There's still a ton of dry air on the western side of this, so we see some bands of rain coming in and kind of falling apart just a little bit. So the heaviest rain is staying offshore. They are getting some wind and some surge along the coast. Right now, winds at 65 miles an hour. It's gust to 75, moving into a very hostile environment with wind shear and dry air, so likely not going to strengthen uh, much at all. And the original path, which was closer to the coast, is a little bit farther inland now. But the uh, cone, you can see, still there's a wide area that this could move. But the point is, the cone is narrow enough that we're going to have impacts around here as this is going to start rounding the edge of that high just offshore. And then eventually, the upper level winds are going to take over with this trough coming in. And that's going to accelerate the storm across North Carolina, which is good news. The faster it moves, the less rain we're going to get. But we're still getting quite a bit of rain around here. So a flash flood watch has been issued for later Monday through early Tuesday. And this is the European model. One of the outliers showing the heaviest rain out to the west. Most of the global models I'm looking at has it around the triangle and points just westward. There's going to be a narrow path of very heavy rain. We're talking upwards of around three to maybe five inches of rainfall. You can see our in-house model showing just that a narrow path of some heavier rain across the region. But the reason we don't have 10, 12, 14 inches of rain is because this is going to be booking it, really moving at a fast pace. So two to three potentially from the triangle to the west. Winds at 30 to 40 miles an hour. We've got a swath along the 95 and corridor, including parts of Wake County and Raleigh, by the way, at three to five inches of rainfall potentially, and gusts at 45, maybe up to 60. The gusts will be probably strongest just to our east, but less in the way of rainfall. So there's going to be a bullseye on the rain right across the 95 corridor. And if you look at recent uh, days, the last five days, we've had a lot of rain. So in many cases, we already have saturated ground. We're going to add rain. We're going to add wind to this uh, uh, scenario. So we can see number of trees going down here. And this happens a lot with the wind throw effect. You don't have to have gusts that strong. 35 to 45 with saturated ground, we can see trees going down. So power outages are definitely a possibility. So the timing is mainly early Tuesday. That means Monday night, overnight into early Tuesday. Tuesday morning, heavy rain with some flash flooding, winds gusting at 35 to 55, maybe some locally higher gusts along the 95 corridor. Power outages possible and east of 95 or east of where the track is, there's a risk we could get some tornadoes. A lot to talk about.